Yo, 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 yo. Yeah. Well, guess what's up, guys? We are back at it again. This is the IVP with Dr. IVZ. You already know what to do, guys. Um, oof. Excusez-moi. Excusez-moi. No, I'm just joking, yo. <laughs> Bro, what if I just started rapping in French? Because we have a multi talented host. The host with the most. So multi talented, man. He ain't no joke. And he can keep on going in and in and in and in. But hey, here we go. Y'all don't want the smoke. It's the one and only. That guy. The premier, le le aujourd'hui, <laughs> is Dr. IBZ. <laughs> now, my French is kind of shit because um, I don't know. I haven't been working on it after grade school. I kind of like stopped once they said, "Yo, nigga, you don't have to do French no more." I said, "Really?" <sighs> I'm going to learn Spanish. Then I went to go learn Spanish, and that teacher was a bitch, and I was like... Dude, what the fuck? So then they just reverted to me teaching myself shit as I go, or like when I go to work. Oh, you know Spanish? You'll teach me a one-two, one-two, right? And I'll ask... I already have like a list of things I'll ask them. Then they tell me. Me, my go-tos are curse words. Curse words. That is my go-to. You got to teach me how to curse and how to function as in like just to see wagwa. You got to teach me all of that. If you don't teach me all of that, nigga, well, guess what? I do what I want, you know? I do whatever I want. Hmm? Je n'aime pas, I do whatever I want. Nah? Je n'aime pas, listen to you. I, I do whatever I want. Anyways. So, enough with the f- fudgery. What we're going to do today is... Um, by the way, how's everyone's week going? How's everyone doing? Just know that whatever you're going through is temporary. And also... Also... One thing I'm going to say, I'm going to tell this to all the men out there. All of the men out there. Every single guy out there. Stop opening up to women. Now, you can open up after y'all either like hooked up, y'all get to know each other. You can open up a little bit, but a little bit. A little bit, not even too much. A little bit, like opening up, saying like, "Yo, you know what? One time, um, something, something happened at home, and 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 the comfort of food, you know what I mean, was chicken nuggets. So from that day on, like I love, I value chicken nuggets. I love chicken nuggets, chicken nuggies. You know what I mean." And then you can be like, and then and then you can be like, okay, I understand, I get that. But no, this is not what we're talking about. Opening up to women as men, it's a waste of fucking time. A lot of women would be like, and here's the thing: the reason why is because, and y'all know who the fuck y'all are, because <laughs> some of y'all, some of y'all told me to open up niggas opened up and y'all went oh shit i don't want to deal with all that and it's like so then why are you trying to tell me that niggas should open up more they should talk more they should talk express themselves more and then when they do it's oh man you're un- you're uncomfortable it's like you have to, you have to make your mind you can't pick one I mean, you can't, you can't have both sides. You can't be like, yo, open up, but don't open up like that. Then how the fuck do you expect a nigga to open up? So I, 
One day. Right. One day. This one person tells me. This one girl tells me to open up more. Guess what a nigga does. Because here's the thing. I did this to prove a point. Because I remember... I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember, okay? Back in my high school days, where I, when I actually was being like, I was like, you know what? Let me just be honest and be honestly me. And did it, did it. Nigga, I did that, and guess what? Nothing bad happened or anything, but... I didn't experience anything where it's like, okay, that was negative. So I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe she's right. Nigga, nigga opened up a little bit. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? She went and told my roommate. Niggas went at OT out of town. Invited my roommate over to tell me, to tell me like, yo, man, he's was, he was opening up to me. And, da -da 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 -da. and my roommate was like, why the fuck are you t telling me this? So, like, <laughs> you know what, you guys know what I'm saying? Like, it just goes to show you, like, okay, you told me to open up just for you to go around my back and talk shit about me after. Like, yo, this guy opened up and he said, da 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 da, -da and this is not the third. Like, what? Like, yo, I don't, I don't understand that. Dude, what the fuck? Because when you're going through some shit and I sit there and I and I listen to what you're going through and I'm and I'm consulting you and everything, I'm not judging you. I'm not saying like, oh, this girl's an emotional. Da -da 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 -da. I'm not saying nothing. I'm not even judging you. Your character, nothing. Nafsiako, everything. I'm not doing all that. But me, when I do it and I open up a little bit, it's oh you're a little, oh he's a bitch. Oh he's this. Oh, 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 oh that's too much. Da -da. So then don't Women, don't tell men to open up if you can't handle what he's going to unpack on you. You want to know why? Because a lot of men have a lot of shit that they want to unpack, but they can't unpack it because of situations like that. Or because situations like that happen, and then the girl just completely judges them. Or mis mis misquotes them. Or here's, a, here's one word, or here's a certain phrase and they automatically shut it, shut down everything else the niggas saying. So, guys, don't open up to women, bro. Open up to your, your niggas, your family. The only women you should open up to are is like family members. Or women that like you've been friends for years and they and they know you already. But other than that, no. Maybe you know, even even a coworker that's a woman. Like, opening up to them, no, nigga, guess what? They're going to go around your back, and they're going to go be like, yo, this guy just told me that. Like, no matter how nice you think they are to you, especially at work, people are fake. Fake, 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 fake. And once you understand that people are fake, and you're, like, you, you're the only person that's keeping it real, then you have an authenticity to yourself. And when you have an authenticity to yourself, that's something that you bring to the table that no one else can bring. Guess what happens? A lot of doors open up for you. Now, it's going to slowly open up for you. Right? It depends on, depending on how aggressive your personality is. But you understand what I'm saying. You get me. So. Oh, yeah, by the way. Disclaimer. Back at it like a crack at it. If y'all didn't know the past few episodes, not even the past few episodes, the past few months, I've been back at doing my, you know, I'm, I'm drinking again. Now, I know, guys, I know, guys. Dude, what the fuck? I know. I get it. I get it. Yo, why are you drinking again? Why are you drinking? Like, I completely understand, right? And everyone's just like, yo, why are you drinking? Like, and I'm like, yo, man, it's because I'm... Hey, yo, what the fuck? It's because I'm going through shit, you know, like... Stop the cap. Okay. Let's... Let's... Fuck all the glasses and shit. Look into my eyes. When you look me in the eyes And tell me that you love me 
And everything alright When you look me in the eyes Anyway, so I just want to say this Okay And after I say this I want to really get into the nitty and gritty And, and really kind of like What's the word called? I want you guys to understand something. When you are going through a lot of things, especially financially as a man, and you feel like you cannot help and provide for others that that need your help, and even, even if you can, there's nothing, like literally, 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 you open your bank account and it's like nothing, bro. A fly comes out, bro, and a bunch of crickets, dog. Like, it is the most weird time. Because one, it's a time where, for some odd reason, girls want to hang out more when a nigga's broke. And this, I'm talking about my situation. For me, when a nigga is broke as shit... But here's the thing. So, when I wasn't drinking, I was just sitting in this apartment, not doing shit, podcasting, editing, podcasting, editing, and I was on top of everything, dropping every day to the point where it's like, the algorithm was like, nigga, we don't even want these videos, bro. You're just dropping every day, bro. Like, we, we can't even really put these on the algorithm like that. It's not going to hit on the algorithm because you keep just dropping videos. And I'm like, nah, penetrate that shit. Keep dropping, dropping, dropping. Then I started drinking again, right? Because I took six months off, right? Six months off of drinking. I did not drink for like six months, yo. From February to like August. And honestly, that by itself, that by itself deserves a round of applause. I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care what anyone has to say about that. I fucking don't care. I did my thing, right? So. Oh, yeah, and by the way, right after this podcast, Nick is taking a quick shower and going to work. (laughs) Like, Nick is, I'm telling you, bro. So, what was that? Did I take a nap, podcast before work, or podcast, like, after work, and then do a bunch of editing and then end up not sleeping? You know what I'm saying? So at least I got some sleep in. So, and you know when you get the itis? I had two bites of food and I fell asleep. Anyway, so when I was in this, when I'm in this apartment and I'm chilling and my money's depleting, when I had the money, it's like, ah, I'm good. It's whatever. Smoke some weed, smoke some weed. I started smoking so much weed, I was smoking an ounce a week. Yes. Yes. Damn! An ounce a week. That is too much weed to be smoking a week. I don't give a fuck who... Like, when I say too much weed, I was like, nigga, I'm going through an ounce a week. I'm talking about I'm smoking in the morning, smoking in the afternoon. I'm, I'm, Yo, oh, I just did this, ball up. Have this, I had like five, six spliffs rolled up. Whenever I'm at a function, I have six, seven spliffs rolled up. Like, crazy smoke, Right? Like, I'm like, like literally, hey, 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 hey. Smoke weed every day. Like, literally, like, that's what I was on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can see the shirt. Like, I was on that vibe. Smoking every fucking day. Just talking, 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 talking. So then I got to the point where I fucking realized. I had to realize for myself that what I was doing was harming my health. I was harming my health by smoking. Because here's the thing. When I was smoking, I'm using batch. And I'm smoking cigarettes too now. Because, yeah, on top of that. Because like now I'm like, fuck this. Let me smoke a one, two, one, two. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm smoking way even more. I'm not going out, out anymore because I'm trying to avoid drinking. So I'm not really trying to go out anymore. But for some odd fucking reason, 
everyone I know that's been telling me like, oh, like, yo, don't drink. Or, oh, like, yo, like, you're good. You don't have to drink anymore. Everyone, by the way, you guys like my new hat? Everyone is telling me that. Guess what's going on? Everyone is telling me that. Guess what's going on? They're drinking, too. So it's like, why are you telling me not to drink, but you're drinking? <laughs> so it's like, all right, man. You know what? I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. And 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 if... Hey, here's the thing. Who wants to be broke? Or not broke, but financially struggling. Because I have money coming in. It's just all of it's going to have to go somewhere, right? <laughs> like, you, like, literally... To everybody that's in debt the, and it's still working and still paying off every bill, y'all know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. All the money you make is not your money. So you're like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to have a couple fucking beers. Bro, do you know how stressful it is? To, to, all your money is not yours. All of it. So every single paycheck you fucking get is not yours. It's not yours. Nope. It's not tangible. That whole paycheck, you gotta you gotta cut it up and calculate it in a way where everyone gets their piece and you get your little piece, and then your little piece is not even that much. So then you just end up going, okay, what can I get with this little piece? Nothing. All right, nigga. Beers, it is, nigga. Fuck it. Psst, buy more, buy more bogies. Buy buy more, buy more weed. Buying more food, right? That's literally what I spend my money on. So it's like everything else I have to finesse, figure out, or whatever. Even food, I, I like. I like since I work in a restaurant, it's kind of easy to finesse food. To to like to working in a restaurant and to be like, yo, man, when you get home and to be like, yo, man, I'm hungry. I have no food. Out. There's no fucking way. When you work in a restaurant, you're always going to have food. Always going to have food. Always. So, the one thing that sometimes I really try to like understand is that I don't know why life tends to move in in that direction where it's like when you're when you're going through shit and you're broke, and da, 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 da. it's like, hey, I, let me let me throw you, let me throw you some, let me throw you some bail, let me shoot you some bail, some Christian bail. You know what I mean? When you're going through it, when you're not going through anything, because staying in this basement was was it was whooping my ass, yo. And then I didn't have, I was trying to find hobbies, but like the hobbies, they, I didn't really know where to go to find any hobbies or anything like that. So I'm like, fuck. Hello, darkness, hi, old friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? I swear to God. So then niggas just said, fuck this. Opened a can up. <coughs> Back at it like a crack at it. Now, am I proudful of this? Am I happy about this? Fuck no. But when you go through shit, and when you go through a lot of bullshit, there's a tendency to be like, okay, well, what are things that can make me like, even though I'm going through it, it can numb that shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows exactly what the fuck I'm doing. We are in a time in an economy where shit is just fucked up. Everything is left. Everything is right. Everything is just weird. So, if I'm going through it, you hit up your friends. Yo, what are you saying? Da, da, da. Yo, you guys good? Da, da. Nah, man. I'm going through it over here. They're going through it. You hit up your family. They're going through it. You go to work. They're going through it. Everywhere you go, there's negativity. There's no positivity. Everywhere you go, there's some type of negative aspect thrown at you. So you know what niggas, your niggas, niggas be doing nowadays? Weed vaping 
And then when I get home, I have a one-two beer. Why? Because fuck it. Now, the key thing is to not go overboard with it. Right? Now, I know I'm talking about a lot of personal shit today. Um, but this is a very intimate time. Very intimate time. This is being recorded at like around 4 a.m. So 4 or 5 a.m. So like this is an intimate time where you have very intimate thoughts with yourself. So I thought I would kind of bring that to the podcast for today. You know what I mean? Just just show you guys a little bit more about me. You know what I mean? That's all. Now, we have a bunch of topics to, to get into. Bunch of topics. But yeah. I just wanted to address the whole alcohol thing and for everybody to be like to just chill, just just chill out. Just chill out, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, we are all human and we all go through shit. And yes, drinking is not good. I'm going to end it off on this. Drinking is not good. Having a one two drink Eh, you know what I mean? I don't I won't judge you for having a one-two drink. But drinking in itself every day is not good. One two beer every day is ugh, no one's gonna really say shit to you about that. But drinking every fucking day, I'm talking about hard liquor, bottles of wine, that is not good. Twenty beers, fifteen beers a day, like that's not good. Having a one two, one two is is okay. And I'm not talking about religiously or anything like that. I'm talking about, hey, if you drink, having a one, two, one, two after work, cool. You're unwinding. You're chilling. You're trying to woo-saw so you can restart the next day. When I wasn't, when I was just, just, just fucking chilling in this basement, bro, I was getting frazzled because I was like, my mind was constantly like, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do that, I have to do that. I needed time to be like, yo, just fucking sit down and relax. No, I have to do this, I have to do this. Watch TV show. Oh, what's going on in the TV show? They're, like, that's how my mind is when I'm sober as hell. I'm constantly, like, on, like, thinking, thinking. And that is so fucking overwhelming when you're just trying to relax. Especially when you get older. The older you get, the more you're trying to just fucking relax. And if your mind is constantly like that, bro, so you need something to be like, hey, yo, chill the fuck out, bro. My, just think, you know what? That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I smoke. That's why I drink. And that is the end. So, plus, this is not going to be a very topic field episode. So I thought I would lead into the personal thing and then we're going to get into these topics. You know what I mean? And hopefully that was like very insightful for anybody that's going through it in terms of like alcoholism, drugs, whatever the case may be. Just know there's a lot of us that are going through it. There's a lot of us that are just like y'all that need a drink every now and then. That A, it might result into other shit, you know what I mean? And honestly, when I say result into other shit, I'm talking about like, like, let's say work asks you to stay longer, but the liquor store closes at nine. It's seven o'clock. Work's like, yo, can you stay? Can you stay a little bit longer? You go, yo, but I have to leave at eight. And that hour that you're there, you're frantic because you really want to go buy your booze and you don't want to miss out on buying that booze. So you're frantic like a motherfucker you're running around like chef what do you need what do you need what else you need what else you need all right later guys you 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 get changed so quick that you might even forget something at work just so you can make the liquor store you get what i'm saying like it 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 really it gets it gets intense like that sometimes i don't recommend it to people so we're gonna do this okay we have India versus Canada. So there was this, this, um, this, uh, a Sikh, a Sikh, Sikh, is this Sikh or Sikh? Sikh, right? And there's a, there was a leader, a Sikh leader. Um, he was, hold on. 
He was, um, I think he's from, hold on, let me find the article, because this this was this was very weird because all the the whole time I've been seeing like oh World War Three uh, India versus Canada and I'm like India versus Canada that is the World War Three then I look and I see India suspends visa services right and then travel plans upended amid frying Canada India ties so Canada is saying that India created assassinated the Sikh leader now there's something going on between the Sikhs and the Muslims in India I think something like that um, I didn't do that much research but I know there's something like that going on there's conflict and I, there's always been conflict like that so well that's how Pakistan got formed and like oh, it's, it's a whole it's politics right so from what I've been hearing and from what I can acquire and from what I can understand is that this guy got murdered, shot right outside of his, his, his spot, like his like little, his headquarters. He gets, but he was the type of guy that was like, like he was like against Whatever, whatever is going on in India, I don't know what the conflict is, but there's a conflict going on in India. So he was on the Sikh side, right? So he gets killed in Canada. The Canadian government comes out and says this wasn't from us. This had to be the Indian government that assassinated this guy. Now, if you want to look into this, <clears throat> there's what Sidhu Muswala. There's all this. There's all this shit, right? Where the moment his, his he stopped having like <clears throat> security and bodyguards around him, he got murdered. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and let's look at it like this, bro. Governments, governments carry out assassinations. Let's not. Let's not. In other countries, and governments will do it if they can do it. They'll do it. If they know people that can do it, they do it. There is a big fucking pot, heavy, heavy, heavy Indian population in Canada. I would not, like, I, I, this is the one time where I kind of be like, you know what, Trudeau, I could kind of see what you're, what you're saying. Like, this is the one time where I'll be like, okay, we need to talk to the Indian government to resolve, to figure out a resolution. Because if the Indian government is blaming us for this shooting, when it could be them and it could be like this whole thing, then what are we doing in it? And here's the thing. I'm not too educated on this. I'm not too educated on this. I didn't do too much research. I just wanted to know, okay, what the fuck is going on? Because, one, I need to get a VPN because the Canadian media is only showing me shit that they only want me to see. So right now, I sound as if, I sound a little bit like I'm on Trudeau's side because all the things I've been seeing was the Trudeau side of things. I don't know what's going on in the Sikh community. I don't know how they feel about it. I don't know what's going on in India and how they feel about it. I don't know nothing. So, and the one dude in the group chat that's Indian, he's He's a mad, he's a, he's a mad sarcastic ass nigga. So he can't even tell, he doesn't really want to tell us what's going on or explain it that much. So I w I'm asking to my community, to anybody that's hearing this. Can you explain to me the reasons why this is very important and making international news? Because the Canadian government, the Canadian media is not really telling me anything. So here's where I'm using the internet and whatever platform I have to get educated because I need to understand what the fuck's going on because this seems very significant. Very fucking significant. The fact that the, the, the prime minister is like commenting on it. You know what I mean? This has to be... Sidhu Muswala got murdered? Nothing, right? And he's a, he's a Canadian. I think he's a Canadian that got murdered in India. Nothing. You didn't... Didn't hear the prime minister say anything about that. But this guy dies and then the niggas is saying shit. 
You know what I mean? Like, nigga, this guy dies and niggas are saying shit. So it's like, all right, man, so, something wrong. Something wrong here. Okay? So, yeah, so, and the guy was a Canadian citizen that night. So it makes it even more politically weird how, like, a Canadian citizen died. And, and since he's a Canadian citizen, the government has to investigate and look into it, especially if he's high profile. So now the government's like, yo, I think we think India has something to do with this. And they probably have information that we don't know, but they're trying to allude to it. But it's like, hey, yo, why do I feel like you guys are capping? Why do I feel like maybe India or whoever whoever's from India can tell me what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Because, like, there's just... Y'all know what it is, man. There's a lot of, like, uh... Stop the cap. A lot of cap out here. And if you want to just be capping, just to cap, or if just to seem like you're right, or just to seem like what you're doing is noble, like, nigga, nah, nah, I'm done. I'm getting the fuck out of here with that shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, leave me alone. So, there's a few things that we need to understand and we need to establish, and there's a fucking code. There is a code to everything, okay? I, how can I put it? I try my best to really, to really break shit down, right? And, I, oh, we're done with this topic. I already, I, I don't, I'm not that educated, so there's not too much I can go in on. <laughs> and I'm sounding, and I can hear myself, I'm sounding like I'm siding with the Canadian government, which sounds weird because I don't know how that side feels. And once I know how that side feels, then I can establish a very well educated opinion, right? DJ Vlad versus Nicki Minaj. DJ Vlad. Now, DJ Vlad has some points. And he was not... Like, this nigga did not give... Yo, fam. DJ Vlad, when he has a point, and someone proves his point, guess what happened? He will go the fuck off on you. Okay? Now... We're going to go here. Let me just find the fucking tweets. Hold on. It's so stupid. Like, hold on. DJ Vlad, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, man. So, here we go. <clears throat> Nicki Minaj's husband, Big Zoo, Big Zoo, whoop, right? He is a fucking idiot because the whole time this nigga was on probation. So remember when I when I went in on him last podcast with the arth no 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 that was another thing arthritis fingers but I went on him last podcast right we're gonna call this one back at it like a crack addict or or relapsed addict or something we're gonna call this something clout addict whatever clout addict is pretty good these guy this guy's an idiot. So you're on probation or whatever the case may be. You violated your probation by making online threats to offset. You are married to Nikki fucking Minaj, you fucking big idiot, bro. Sit your ass at home, bro. You have all of this, these benefits that come with this woman. And here's the thing. I love Nicki Minaj. Love her to death. When she's actually being her. Like her. When Nikki is being her, I fuck with it. When she's on that rah-rah gangster shit, rah-rah, like a dungeon dragon, when she's on that, that type of shit, it, it, it gives me the, what, what do girls say? It gives me the ick. It makes her fucking less attractive when she does that shit. I love when, like, I love, I love class like a motherfucker. When Beyonce like just murks people with class, even when rich rich niggas like Jay Z will murk a nigga with some class, that type of shit, bro. I love that type of shit. Drake is a little he'll, he'll be Drake is a little mix, but Drake will do that shit too. That's what I like. That's what I like seeing. Like nigga, I'm too clean for you, nigga. You're not even on my level, nigga. 
Do you even know what fork to use for which dessert, for which appetizer, nigga? Like, that type of shit, my nigga. Right? I love that. That's what I love. I don't like it when you're already up there and you're still trying to be this... <clears throat> create this image like you're fucking ratchet hood that type of person you are mul- you're a multi-millionaire you're married to a multi-million not her not him but she's a multi-millionaire you married a nigga from the streets and then now all of a sudden you're trying to get people beat up you're trying to get people hit up so you only dated meek mill because he was a so basically Nicki minaj has a type her type are hood niggas Niggas that are about it, about it, about that life. You want to know why? So that, let me, let me, let me quote this tweet that DJ Vlad said. And DJ Vlad has a fucking point. I don't care if give a fuck what anyone has to say. I don't care if people feel some type of way. DJ Vlad has a fucking point. Now, and I quote DJ Vlad. Okay. Let's quote DJ Vlad here. And I want to play, like, proper music. Yeah? DJ Vlad. Hmm. No. No. Come on, there we go. All right. No, no, that's not. Nah, fuck, fuck the music. Fuck the music. Fuck the music. Fuck the music. I'm just gonna read it, and I'm gonna try to do it in like a good voice. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this properly. That was my alarm. Sorry, guys. Um. Nicki Minaj husband is on house arrest for threatening Offset. Well, let me get my glasses. My, um, let me get my reading glasses. Okay. Just making sure my lips ain't too dry. Why didn't you guys tell me my lips were getting dry? Come on, man. You guys supposed to help a nigga out. Anyways, Nicki Minaj's husband is on house arrest for threatening Offset. Right after that, she previews a song on IG saying she got killers who will pull up and do whatever, whatever she say. This was the same Nicki who threatened to send her husband to Academics' house for his comments about her. This is the same Nicki who told Nick Meek Mill to have his crew beat up Quentin Miller, which then happened. Have you heard a woman scream? My man will fuck you up over something she started herself. This is all personal for Brad at this point. That's Nicki. If you want to see how these stories end, check out my interview with Travis Rudolph. This is all personal for Brad right now. After an argument with his girlfriend, she sent his brother and three other guys to shoot up his house. One of them ended up dead. Another one got shot. Travis was charged with murder, which he like luckily beat in trial due to self-defense. To all the men out there, I don't care how fat her asses are, how good her sex is. Avoid women like Nikki who use men as scratch dummies like the plague. I said what I said. Now, I'm not here to fuck with the barbs uh, in, in terms of like poke that net, that nest. Right, because I I fuck with Nicki Minaj, so I'm not here to be like oh the barbs. I'm not here to do all that shit, bro. Nicki, I fuck with you. No matter what, and I want all the barbs to hear what I'm saying. Nicki, I fuck with you. You marrying that nigga, your childhood nigga from back in the day that y'all liked each other and then shit happened, whatever. It's not a good look for you. Now, I'm not going to judge the person that you're with. However, you're a millionaire and all this type of shit. You're already up there. It's not like y'all came up together. You were already up here. You said, yo, fuck Safari, and you went below that. Okay. To each his own. I mean, you went above it with Meek Mill, and then you went below all the way down. Below them niggas with this guy. Now, if I had, if if I'm a multi-millionaire, there's not, I'm, t- I'm not, fuck gender. If I'm a multi-millionaire, 
and my partner gets out of line and does some shit like that, guess what, nigga? I'm putting that motherfucker in check. Man, woman, whatever. They, I don't give a fuck who you're attracted to, where you're from, whatever. Your significant other, if you're worth millions and they aren't, should not be fucking around like that, bro. Going online, making threats, trying to stand outside, being like, yo, where are you at? Where are you at? Yo, so whoop, where are we going? What are you going to do in your, you're 40, nigga? You're in your 40s, my nigga. You're about to be 50 years old. The fuck are you doing? Me, I'm almost, th- I'm about to be 30 in less than a year. And I'm literally on some, you know what? That street shit, it ain't even that cool anymore to me. It doesn't even sound like gravitating or like, it, it just doesn't anymore. I've seen so many people die, so many people go to jail, so many people get shot, so many people get hurt, families get torn apart. That Me, the street shit, for me, is like, ugh, it's whatever. Niggas do it, they gotta do it. Niggas don't do it, if you don't have to do it, then don't fucking do it. The niggas that try to pretend and try to get into it and try to be like, oh, look at me, guys, you are a fucking sicko. You're a sicko. This is a sick Negro. You're a sicko. All those kids that used to just fucking try to go to the hood that come from the suburbs and try to be like, yo, guys, look, I'm active. I'm involved. You guys are sick ass niggas, bro. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about I'm talking about all of y'all. You guys are weird for that. You guys come from good homes, but because of hip hop, the media, they made it seem like it was so cool to be out here. And then. You start making friends with these people. These people start getting hurt. These people start getting... And then now now you're going through all this unnecessary trauma because you wanted to get involved and get your feet wet, get your hands dirty. Now, some people are built for it. Not everyone is built for it. Not everyone is built for the streets. Even people that you think are built for the streets are not built for the fucking streets. No one is really built for this. It's jail or death or looking over your shoulder for the rest of your fucking life. There are niggas that stop stop gangbanging and 10 years later got smoked because they had beef. That nigga said, I don't give a fuck if this nigga's on the right and up. When I catch him slipping, I'm catching him slipping. That's what I'm telling you niggas. And you niggas don't understand that. If you don't have to be involved, stay out of it. If you have family members and all that shit, then you have no choice but to be on your P's and Q's. Because you have family members that are involved. You have people that are involved. Anything can fucking happen. But with the one fucking thing, the motherfucking thing I want people to understand is if you do not have to be in the streets, Tax Stone, what is it, Casanova or Tax Stone, one of these niggas were talking about how they used to live in a house in a good home and come from their good home and go all the way to the hood and start gangbanging. And they had everything that they can possibly need at home. I wasn't one of those kids. If I had shit at home, nigga, I'm not leaving my crib. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'll invite people over too. The fuck am I trying to go endanger myself just to look cool? I never understood that. I never understood people like that. I'm going to endanger myself so I can look cool. Okay, what? Yo, the girls, my nigga, you know who taught me? Yo, Wiz Khalifa. God bless Wiz Khalifa. May, like, God bless Wiz I might even call this God bless Wiz Khalifa. I'm telling you, God bless Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa taught me how to roll. Taught me how to maintain my hair, like, in terms of, like, keep it, like, nice and the, the shampoo. He showed me, like, mane and tail. This is the shampoo you use, right? Um... He also taught me that you can be yourself. You don't have to be a hood ass nigga. You can be yourself and still get all the bitches. That's what Wiz Khalifa taught me. You can be yourself, be an honest man, make an honest living, do your thing. As long as you're just charming, fucking sense of humor, your personality is dope as fuck. You're cool and dope as well. But you're just not aggressive like them other niggas. Some girls like that more than them niggas. Trust me. Some girls are tired of that macho, macho man shit. And then you can show that, A.O., 
you see how chill I am and how happy I am and shit, but there's a reason why it's like this. It's because I be doing this type of shit. So if you're going to be with me, we're going to do shit like this. So you're still being a man at the same time, but you're being yourself. That is fucking attractive to a lot of women. You don't need them other women. Are like, I need a man that he, like Asian doll. If he, he doesn't have three bodies, then uh, that, that, that's how they sound, bro. To me, that's how they sound. If he doesn't have three bodies, then I don't think I need him. He just has that gun by the dresser or a gun in the car. Like, I, bitch, I don't need you then. You don't need those bitches. You want to know why? Because those are the same girls that when, when something happens, something occurs, they're going to be like, oh, my, I'm going to get my man involved. I'm going to get my man involved. It's like, yo, bitch, we're eating dinner. You have a problem with dude. Let me walk up to dude and talk to him. Let me talk to him. You don't know how to talk to men because you're just going to hype up to him and yell at him instead of talking to him. Men... If you talk to us properly, we will respect you even if we don't agree with you. It's the fucking naggy shit in the background when a, when a woman do. That's what makes a man fucking snap. I've seen it. I've fucking seen it. I've seen two men be cordial with each other and it's the fucking girl that's fucking making shit worse. And then the two men are like, yo, bro, just don't worry, I got this. My girl's just wild. And the girl wants something to happen. And it's like, you're, emo- you're using your emotions to make a decision. And no, we don't need that right now. Yes, we, there's an issue. Yes, there's a problem. But we can fix this without anybody getting hurt. Why does someone have to fucking get hurt for you to feel like, okay, now we're good? Why do you feel like there has to be a consequence when there could just be a discussion? That's what I'm talking about. Like, the whole Cardi B and Nicki Minaj beef is so fucking stupid. It's stupid. It stems from nothing. Literally, people pit them together because they have similar vibes. And because Cardi B, with her trajectory was going up, it's still it's still there. But it's still it's up and it's stuck, basically. No pun intended. You know what I mean? But, like... Now, Cardi B is a household name. Nicki Minaj is also a household name. But they're still getting at each other, still beefing, which is so fucking petty. No pun intended to her husband's name, Mr. Petty, whatever the fuck his name is. Um, this beef is stupid. It's stupid. Offset and Cardi B are well off chilling. Offset has a shit ton of money, has his own thing going. Cardi B has a shit ton of money, has her own thing going. Nicki Minaj is good. And that nigga is doing whatever the fuck that nigga is doing. Why the fuck do you niggas need to be beefing with each other? You guys are good in life. I never understood being good in life. This one thing about keeping the same energy when you were broke. (laughs) Cardi and Nicki, when they were beefing, Cardi was not broke (laughs) when they were beefing. It was probably like, okay, Cardi B was probably expecting Nicki Minaj to open open her arms up and be like, yo, come here, Cardi. Like, I love you. Like, she, that's what Cardi was expecting from Nicki. Because Cardi probably looked up to Nicki. And Nicki was like, bitch, you got to do more work to get, to, get, to, to get at least whatever the fuck it was. She was probably expecting it. Bodak Yellow shot up. And when Bodak Yellow shot the fuck up, Nicki was like, oh, fuck. I bet you any fucking money, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B linked up before the before the blow up. They rubbed they rubbed each other off the wrong way. Cardi B blew blew up, and Cardi B kept the same fucking energy to Nicki. And instead of instead of being cordial with Nicki, being like, "Yo, you know what? Like, let's just bygones be bygones. That was in the past." Da 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 da. Cardi B turned up, and then Nicki. Double Nikki's like, all right, well, fuck you then, bitch. That's pr- I think that's what happened. Personally, I think that's what happened. Cardi B was starting to create some noise. People were comparing her to Nicki Minaj, right? Nikki was like, yeah, I could see it, but this bitch, no, this and Cardi B's background, right? Her history. She used to be a stripper. She used to be this, that. She used to be wilding on the gram, and she's 
she's rapping now and she thinks she could that type of shit yes we could see i could see nikki being like man get this bitch out of here when she pulls up and tries to be like nikki man nah. you know what i mean i could see that energy happening then i could see cardi be blowing the fuck up and saying fuck you nikki i'm out of here i could see that but the beef is stupid i'm just saying but yeah, DJ Vlad, for once, like, I kind of, like, agree with what he said. Anyways. Um. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> now. <coughs> Sorry. Maya Khalifa, what I heard. Now, I don't know if this is real or not. But Maya Khalifa... And the only reason why is because I already reported on this shit. So we're going to create some more, um, what's the word called? What's the word called? More continuity. Apparently, my Khalifa is going back to porn. Now, when I heard this, I was like, wait, What? <laughs> the girl who got married a bunch of times divorced a bunch of times the girl who said that she doesn't want to do porn anymore because of how she's judged and how she's looked at that girl is going back to doing prawn so she's going back to doing some corn and the one thing I really want to know is one thing I really want to know is, was all that shit talking about them, other people, was it worth it? Now, I will really want to confirm this shit, right? Because this is the only way we could confirm it. We can only confirm it, but... I don't get... I, like I say, it's so confusing... Look, so uh, I don't know, but it was it was weird because I seen this off of well, real Toronto news. I don't know if that's real or real not, but via it's via Hotspot TV. They're trying to say that I'm just look. I'm gonna look at it like this. That's very fucking ironic. You went from, I don't want to be judged. I don't want people looking at me like I'm weird. I don't want people seeing this and that and the third. You went from all of that. You went from all of that. Right? All of that. That's what you went from all of that to being a complete dickhead. To being like, you try to, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm trying to say, man. Do not believe these, these, these people. When I say these people, do not believe these celebrities when they talk. They are just talking. You have Lana Rhodes that did so many porn, prawn, porn, whatever. She did a lot of that shit. She ends up having a kid. And the nigga that she has a kid with says, nah, I'm not really trying to be with you. I was just trying to fuck, and then she's she's trying to expose him and all this. Yo, listen up, okay? Listen up. I really want people to understand this. There's consequences that come with certain industries and certain acts that you do. Me, there's consequences to me being being an alcoholic. There's consequences. To drinking every day, to having a one to drink, to being as open as you are about drinking, being a weed smoker, there's consequences. There's prob there's probably girls that I can never fucking talk to or even think about talking to because I smoke weed, because they don't you know what I'm saying? There's consequences to every fucking thing. If you are a porn star, if you do some shit that a lot of men are kinda uh, about, do not try to force them to fucking accept it. Find a man that's going to accept it. I never understood why people try to force people to believe in their own beliefs or to force people to be into their own shit when their shit is kind of like it's taboo in 
80% of the fucking world. Like 80% of the world, being an alcoholic, being being a weed head, being a, being a promiscuous individual, all of that shit is kind of looked down upon. It's looked down, even though you might not be hurting nobody, you're functioning still, you're paying your bills, you're, you're happy, people are still going to judge you, people are still going to find ways to yell at you, people are still going to, so then why, what, what's the point? Why are you trying to gain acceptance from people that don't want to accept you? I never understood that. I never understood why why they try to build a gay mosque when in the Quran it legit says everything, right? So it's like, why? Why can't y'all just, yo, you know what? <laughs> honestly, I'm petty. If I, honestly, I'm petty. If I was part of that community, I would have created my own religion. My own religion, my own place of worship for our shit. I would have had that booming. I would have had that booming. And it would have been a million, multi-million dollar industry. I would have created, my nigga, if I was not, if I didn't, yo, bro, I'm telling y'all, I would have done that if I was if I was part of that community. I would have done that. Because why am I going to try to be accepted by all these religions that say what I'm doing is wrong, but then I want to be accepted by them? Because I still believe in that. Isn't that conflicting? So why not just create my own shit and then do my own shit over here? I still believe in God, but I'm doing my own shit over here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Stuff for Allah, stuff for Allah, stuff for Allah, stuff for Allah. But you understand what I'm saying? It's like if if every time I go into this Popeyes, these guys are being racist to me. I'm going to go fucking go to churches. I'm going to go to KFC because we have churches now in Toronto. I'm going to go to churches. I'm going to go to KFC. I'm going to go to another fried chicken spot. I'm not going to go to the fried chicken spot that hates me. It's like... It's like when I posted a I posted a meme with a bag of Chick Fil A. All of a sudden, oh, he had Chick Fil A with him. Oh, I got yo, bro. I got erased from a group chat and all this type of shit because niggas thought I, I I didn't support them because I ate Chick Fil fucking fillet. You understand what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. It's just it's stupid to me. It makes no sense as to why why do we have to go through all this bullshit for no reason. When you don't have to fucking, you know what I mean? You don't have to just create your own shit and ignore them and do your own thing. Why do you feel like, yo, no, I want to be included. I, they need to know that. No, no, you don't need that. You don't fucking need that. If they don't fuck with you, keep doing your thing and fuck them. Bro, fuck it. What are we doing out here, y'all? We're doing too much. Anyways, so. We got this clip right here, and then I think, I think, we got this clip, and one more, one more clip, one more topic, and then we're done. I seen my cousin's vagina before. You guys already said? I seen my cousin's vagina before. Oh, yeah, by the way, by the way, to that guy that said, I don't want to watch a video of you holding your phone. Why the fuck did you watch the video, that pussy? Anyways, she was like, hey, I need you to take me to the hospital right now. And I was like, okay, don't. No, 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 no. We're going to play smoke. this back. We're going to play this back. We're going to play this back. This shit is hilarious, guys. You guys have to hear this. And I seen my cousin's vagina before. <laughs> yeah, I did. You said, yeah. You said, mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, I saw it in a natural way, in a normal way. My cousin was pregnant, she went into labor. She's like, hey, I need you to take me to the hospital right now. And I was like, okie dokie. But let me smoke this OG Kush real quick. You know, I'm not a woman. I don't know about labor, but I know it's going to be a long day. <laughs> I was like, let me get my mind right. So I get high yeah, I feel quick. It. And I rush her to the hospital. And now it's me, my cousin, and the doctor. And then he asked me, he says, do you want to see a baby being brought into the world? And I'm high as fuck. You know, I was like, hell yeah, dude. That's like National Geographic in real life. You know, she's got her legs in the stirrups, the clampy things. And I'm just staring at it and staring at it and, and staring at it. And nothing is happening. But then, so I look at the doctor. I'm like, hey. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. It was too soon. Yeah. Yeah. 
I stared at my cousin's vagina for no reason at all. <laughs> it was, I know it was like two minutes, but I'm high as hell. That felt like two years to me. So like 20 minutes go by and the doc says, the baby's crowning now, come back. And I don't know, bro. Fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> Fool me twice, that's my cousin's pussy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> said, oh, man. Oh, bro. I think I'm going to end it on that, bro. I'm going to end it on that, man. Man's got to go to work. I got to take a shower and go to work. I'm going to end it on that. But we have two more topics to talk about. But we're going to leave that for the next pod. All right, guys? See? That's how you know we're on point, where I can just leave shit for the next pod. So, guys, hopefully you guys had a good time, good day. We are... Hold on, hold on. Don't worry. I'm not going to rush the end, okay? I Don't worry. I got you guys, okay? It's just I got to take a shower within two minutes. Then that shower got to happen within 20 minutes. And then I got to leave in another 20 to 25 minutes. And make sure I get to work in it. Let me, let me, let me, let me show you niggas now. I showed you niggas that I can do it. So fucking screw it. I keep on going. My nigga, my mind is just inclusive. It's so inclusive, so reclusive. I keep doing me and I'm doing me like the nigga Yusuf stuck in the well. And I'm chilling and I ain't doing well. And I'm just your bitch, motorboat in the <laughs> All right, guys. Hopefully, you guys can have an amazing week. I'm going to come back to you guys on Wednesday. Um, Also, the YouTube videos. Yes, I'm slacking on dropping the actual episode videos, but it just shows that I'm working. I'm working, working, working. Life is working. Everything's working. Everything's twerking. Let me go. Let me just show you what the worth is. Everything's working. Everything's twerking. Episode 173. Episode 173. Episode 173, 73. Them cloud chasers. Hey, all right, now we're done. All right, so peace out. Suck your mother. If you didn't like it, suck your mother. And yeah, oh, Tupac. You good, Baba? Okay. Hey, this nigga's on, this nigga's on the couch. All right. He doesn't really chill on the couch like that. He likes to chill on this chair, but this time, all right. All right, anyways. Uh, bye. I could just get the. <laughs>